by Nikolai's invitation. It was really a, a pleasure and a, almost a surprise. You're going to see that our group, our research group is quite new. So yeah, it was, it's a big honor to, to be here and try to share a little bit of what we have been doing. And well, I hope you enjoy. I'll not take a lot of time. Uh, I will do a small presentation about the group. So introduce what we do, how are our objectives, who we are, uh, what we have done so far. Then <coughs> I will also uh, com continue with a, a presentation of my own uh, contribution in this group, my own research line there. Uh, and then finally, Giuseppe Toasa will join us and make a presentation about uh, Vygotsky and pedology, um, which is also part of uh, the recent things we have been doing as a group. Uh, let me try to share my screen here and yes. Tell me if it's working, please. You can see it, right? Yes, that's it. You can see, right? Okay, so this is our fancy name, Untying Knots, Busting Myths, Escalating Vershinas. Vershina is the name of our group. Contributions to a Materialistic Theory and Method of Psychology from Brazil. Uh, I'm going to explain, I'm going to talk about the name in a while, towards the end of my talk. Uh, our, some of our motivations and context, why we got together and what we thought when we did it. Let me just move my, have this like over the, 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 the slide. Uh, so, our effort was to, to make a more comprehensive and thorough investigation of Vygotsky's work. Uh, this was the main motiv motivation, to understand Vygotsky's work as uh, fully as possible. We had a few obstacles, and we had this motivation also because of these obstacles. Uh, they are, as we all know, many of Vygotsky's works were censored or mutilated editions, both in the original Russian and in the translations, uh, which was a problem to know exactly what Vygotsky actually did. We, we didn't have access to the originals. Even the originals were not uh, correct or entirely uh, complete. Uh, there is also a characteristic in Brazil that most of uh, Vygotsky's work were accessed by indirect translations, which if any of you have any uh, uh, experience with translation, you know that indirect translation is not, by far not the ideal, not the best way um, to, to have access just to, to translated work. Too, mu too many mediations <laughs> between like se several, one or two foreign languages. It can cause several imprecisions and we face that a lot in Brazil because of translations coming mostly from English. Uh, the negligence of political and social context in which Vygotsky's idea emerged was also a problem, especially in the beginning. And disregard of the fundaments, like disappearance of Marxism sometimes, and or taking away certain aspects that were fundamental to the emergence of uh, a cultural historical theory. About the Brazilian context, specifically the research, uh, research in cultural historical uh, theory in Brazil, we have a prevalence, as, as Nikolai mentioned, a prevalence of applied research, but not so much focused on theoretical works, which can be a problem. Uh, we can, there was a lot of effort. I mean, Brazil is a huge country with many contradictions and social problems. It's only natural that we wanted to go to practice and try to use whatever we had to solve real problems. Uh, the thing is that we, all, we also, what we, our concern is we cannot disregard theory on the way. Uh, another problem is like, being in a huge country is that uh, groups are fragmented. So we have many, a lot of groups, really many groups, and but they are not necessarily interconnected. They're not necessarily collaborating. There, there's a lot of fragmentation. People don't really either don't know each other or don't work in the same direction. So this is another problem. We have a lot of centralization in the south southeast, and I mean mm -hmm. Brazil is big, and we we don't have this connection as as uh, good as it could be also something that concerned us. Uh, I brought here this quote from Vygotsky, which 
gives us a little bit of our uh, values because he says that Marxist psychology is a historical mission of our area, a mission that can be fulfilled only through joint efforts of multiple generations of psychologists because the word Marxist psychology does not refer to a particular branch or a particular direction. It is a synonym to scientific psychology. So we were thinking that we sh our intention is kind of to rescue this Marxist fundament and work it in a more holistic way, not as one branch, not as one type of psychology, so to speak. Um, well, as I said, our objective was to research, uh, advance the research on Vygotskyan psychology, considering its far-reaching capacity in different fields and considering its Mar Marxist premises. Uh, the basic tenets for us is to have a historical and critical attitude towards uh, classic authors. So uh, we have to be critical and we have to think about Vygotsky considering his relevance to the present. Uh, sharing the work of international community, particularly, this is important for us, particularly those based on the original editions. So if we cannot either access original uh, editions of Vygotsky, we at least work with uh, interpreters or commenters that did, that uh, accessed and worked based on the original edition. An engaged and critical perspective of science and an interdisciplinary approach. Um, some of, our, of the activities that we have done like so far, we started off a little bit as an informal network. We knew each other, but we didn't collaborate officially as a group uh, until the pandemic came. <laughs> it's interesting how the pandemic changed a lot for us in our life, in our routine. Uh, we are in different parts of Brazil, as you're gonna see later, and we couldn't meet really as often. So during the pandemic, we had the idea of giving an online course called Fundaments of Vygotskyan Psychology. So we gather like, we got together, our, each one in their own expertise, and we, we taught this course. We had uh, many people attending the course all over the country. And this was basically the starting point where we really started formalizing our collaboration and work as a group. Along uh, 2021, we did a series of lives on YouTube. It's a very digital group because we are uh, geographically separated. Uh, we participated in scientific events and in podcasts. So we're trying also to cover not only academic produ production, but also scientific divulgation with a more general broad audience. And between 2020 and 2021, the book that the course we taught was uh, developed uh, as in a book format. So we wrote, based on the classes we gave, we wrote the chapters and we organized this book by the same name, Fundaments of Vygotskyan Psychology. Not published yet, <laughs> it's finished. We're talking to, to publishing houses, but this was one of the, maybe one of the most important results. Our idea is to have some, a textbook, so to speak, about Vygotsky. We have good, good books and good, interesting works that are like basic introductions to Vygotsky. The thing is that most of them are old, let's say like 30 years old. And we wanted to kind of update and, and uh, add some more contemporary research in our, in our work. Um, well, a little bit about these activities. The online course uh, was taught in 10 classes each with three hours, we had over 100 participants from all over the country. This was live, this was in the, in the live classes, but all the courses online and there are lots of views. <laughs> so I think it was um, quite, it had a quite interesting reach. Um, our, we organized in four steps in four categories. We organized as in historical fundaments, philosophical fundaments, aesthetic fundaments, and scientific fundaments. And this is how we organized the book and how we organized uh, the, the, the course and later the book. Aiming to really go to the roots of how cultural historical theory emerged, considering its historical background, considering phys philosophical underpinnings, considering scientific context and how what science was 
consisted of at the time. And also, which is specifically relevant for me, <laughs> the artistic and the aesthetic influence that uh, the, this theory had in the beginning. Uh, lives on YouTube, we did a live that was a discussion of a special issue we organized on a, a good important journal, a Brazilian journal that was the publication, a first time publication of the preface signed by Vygotsky and Leontiev to the Leontiev's book on memory, the second preface. And we organized a special issue around this publication and we did a live discussing it. We had a live about Vygotsky and pedology. This is something that uh, Giselle will talk about today also. And we did a, a live on method in Vygotsky, uh, Marxist method in, in Vygotsky. Another live about Vygotsky versus Dostoevsky, not Vygotsky and, but versus Dostoevsky. Uh, that was uh, based on my translation of Vygotsky's first, one of the first manuscripts right, that was his criticism of Dostoevsky's anti-Semitism. Um, again, so we did this special issue, Vygotsky and Leontiev, with the translation of, uh, of the preface. I think I repeated this. And we also have like uh, in our YouTube channel, we have this playlist with participation in congresses and podcasts. So things that how we have been sharing our work, both in congresses and in, in podcasts. Well, unfortunately, I have to say that they are all in Portuguese <laughs> for you specific as an audience. But uh, anyways, this is also something that explains why in Brazil, we have a very large uh, cultural historical community uh, community of researchers in this area, but not necessarily we are integrated internationally of, because of the language barrier. Not everyone attends congresses abroad and obviously not everyone knows Portuguese <laughs> to know and to get to know our, our work. Uh, we, as a group, we divided the group in three research lines. The first one is historical and theoretical fundaments of Vygotsky's psychology. The researchers involved in this line is Gisele Toassa, Wagner, João, Eduardo, and Rebecca. Artistic fundaments of Vygotsky's uh, psychology, which is me and Eduardo. And Vygotsky and Luria's neuropsychological approach, that is Isabel, I think some of you, I know that Nikolai knows her, and Pamela and Hansel both uh, PhD students of her. Mm -hmm. uh, well, a little bit of the participants. I wanted to show not only the faces, but where we are. You're going to see that we are spread. <laughs> so Giselle, Hebeck, and Eduardo are in Goiás, in the center of, of Brazil, from the Federal University of Goiás and Federal Institute of Goiás. Uh, Isabel, Pamela, and Hansel are from Natal, Rio Grande do Norte the capital of Rio Grande do Norte, the Federal University of Rio Grande do Norte. João and Wagner are from São Paulo. The, uh, they are connected to UNESP, which is a state university of São Paulo. Uh, Eduardo is in Paraná, in, in Unicentro. And I am now in Rio. <laughs> I am now in Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. I'm from São Paulo, but I recently started working here. Um, well, finally, I wanted to, to say a few words about why we chose this name and the Russian name, that is Russian term, Vershina means peak apex summit, so the highest point in a mountain, for example. And we got this from, from Vygotsky himself. He says, for example, in this quote, I brought our word in psychology away from superficial psychology in consciousness, being and phenomenon are not equal, but we also oppose to that psychology. Uh, our psychology is a peak psychology. Vrishina is psychologia. It does not determine the depths of the past personality, but it speaks. Uh, we, we think that this is basically the essence, maybe this might be considered the essence of Vygotsky's project was to aim to the highest development to, to, to developing possibilities, fun, psychological functions, whatever. Uh, and and Vashina being our, 
the, the goal, the actual goal. Um, like I said here, uh, and it, it's as the essence of Vygotsky's research program, as an integrative science that interweaves consciousness, brain, and education. Um, Vygotsky's psychology, Vygotsky psychology emerged as an original articulation of achievements in different fields of knowledge whose limits go beyond psychology and going deep into science, philosophy, and art. That's why we also spread our branches to, to different areas. Uh, in the background, there is an emancipation project that goes together with the height psychology, peak psychology or height psychology, Vershinaya Psychology. So that's why we chose this name. And also using the Russian names gives away a little bit of our intention of going to the original, to the fundament of, 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 the, of the theory. That's our YouTube channel. This is our Instagram. <laughs> we try to be connected in this social media as well. Uh, like I said, we are spread around the country, so we don't have, we're not necessarily together physically, but we try to connect to people using this new medias. Uh, that's it for so far. This would be like our first uh, introduction about the, about the, 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 research group can i move forward I, I think i think it would be best if we did all our presentations in a row and then we had some time left in the end so for the first part we have one hour and a half as i remember right mm -hmm. and then as we finish so uh, we would love to have to hear <laughs> from you uh mm -hmm. but i will move forward right my second presentation that is my own presentation, so to speak. Uh, I named it An Archaeology of Vygotsky's Ideas. This is kind of what I came about. To I was trying to understand what I do. <laughs> and then I think I am doing this. I think I'm doing an archaeology. You tell me. <laughs> I might, this might not be a good name. But anyways, I will try to, to explain what I mean by this. Um, the background of, so as, as I mentioned before, in our group, I am, my chair, let's say, is art. So the Vygotsky's work on art and his early production and this like artistic uh, writings about art. I will give a little bit of the background, how I came to it and what I try to cover in this, in this research. It's a research on Vygotsky before Vygotsky or like, Nikolai uh, named his, the, the undiscovered Vygotsky, right? The Vygotsky, before Vygotsky became Vygotsky, because before he became the psychologist we all uh, love and read, right? Uh, the first objective of this research was to survey, compile, and translate into Portuguese Vygotsky's text about art. So the first task, task was really to find them. <laughs> it was not easy. Now, since 2015, we have the first volume of Vygotsky's complete work, works in Russian. But this is um, ironically the year when I defended my PhD dissertation about this. So I didn't have access to that when I, when I did. So I had to really find these texts. And also I translated them into, into Portuguese. Uh, I did this, uh, in case you're interested, but I did this in the, in, the, in the realm of the language faculty. As you can imagine, this was not of interest, <laughs> probably, in other fields. So I, I had the, the liberty and chance to do this in the language faculty, in the Russian course uh, of the language faculty. Um, the idea was to fill the gap in his, of, of his, Vygotsky's early intellectual bi biography. We knew very little about what Vygotsky did before he started. It seemed like everything started in Moscow. Suddenly he was a psychologist already in 1924. Uh, the second point is Vygotsky's stance on art. Um, in terms of how he defined and how he, he understood aesthetic reaction, the role of art to human development and also aesthetic education. He wrote about that and uh, it's a very dear topic also. Discuss the variety of platforms, genres and target readers Vygotsky has had throughout his career. There are 
as I see it, there are multiple Vygotskys, the scientist, the pedagogue, the critic. I, what I, what I investigated the most was the critic, was not, all, not necessarily the psychologist. And finally, to assess concepts and approaches uh, sketched in, this, in the works about art that later became relevant to his psychological production. So this is where I place this so-called archaeology, if this is a good term. So to try to find maybe the origin or, or at least some embryonic phases of certain ideas that were more well, better uh, developed in, in his scientific work. Ah, just a few images about the archival research that I, that I did. Uh, so the texts, the, 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 the originals that I uh, had to investigate to find this early Vygotsky. I have, we have the picture here of the first volume of the first uh, of the complete works that was released in 2015. It's a major, major source after I got my PhD because I continued working on this material. And it's soon to be released my own collection of this work in Portuguese. Uh, yeah, Vygotsky writings about art, which is a compilation because it's quite a lot to be published. I don't know if everything will be interesting. Uh, so I made a selection and a reasonable introduction to them to, to talk about uh, this works. Well, uh, so, the attempt to make an archaeology of terms and concepts in Vygotsky is, as I said, related to my fourth objective from the list, to assess concepts and approaches that were sketched and uh, briefly or sketched in the works about art that became relevant to cultural historical psychology. I have so far worked on two, two concepts, on two ideas, notions, and uh, one of them is published and the other one I have spoken about and it's about to be published as well as papers. But I investigated the idea of sense and the idea of Prigevanian in early Vygotsky. The thing was, so I will talk about only the first one because I thought it would be too much to, uh, and maybe even repetitive to, to explore both. Uh, but so I will give us an example of this uh, attempt to an archaeology by using the, the idea of sense, smysl in Russian. An archaeology of sense in Vygotsky. So I wrote this, uh, this paper called Interplay of Senses, Art, Dual Structures, and the Category of Sense in Vygotsky. And it was published in 2020, yes. Uh, the procedure, what I did was basically to trace, control find, <laughs> uh, sense in early Vygotsky, how, where he used it. And the idea was just initially mere curiosity. I wanted to say, to see if he used it. It's a normal word in Russian. So of course he used it at some point, but how he used it and did it seem relevant somehow the way he was dealing with the idea of sense in the early writings. And it seemed to me there was, in, it was interesting, not only interesting, but I saw a pattern. So I saw something in common in the way he developed the idea of sense in the writings about art. The corpus I worked with, focusing on my branch here of expertise was the essay on Hamlet, the reviews of the Gomu, theatrical reviews of the Gomu period, a preface that Vygotsky wrote to a uh, visual artist, graphic artist, Alexander Buchowski. That's not a misspelling. This is a, uh, an artist, Buchowski. And the psychology of art and thinking in speech, particularly the chapter thought and word where the idea of sense and meaning is explored more, more explicitly. Uh, the objective was to detect the concept of sense in its dual manifestation in Vygotsky's text about art. Dual manifestation is already an interpretation. So I saw this pattern of duality in his uh, working with uh, the idea of sense. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. uh, to trace 
yes, <laughs> to trace the transformations in the selected corpus. So from what I saw, were there transformations? Was it, was it the same? Was, was it, were there any changes of uh, any type? To identify the sources and traditions with which Vygotsky establishes a dialogue. So it was also clear that he was using, he was coming from different backgrounds and different di uh, theoretical dialogues every time he was discussing uh, the idea of sense. And then finally, to sketch the relation between the concept of sense in texts about art as a general category descri and described uh, in the chapter, thought and word of thinking in speech. Quite a leap, right? It's 10 years, uh, and which for Vygotsky is a lifetime, right? 10 years between thought and word and, <laughs> and psychology of art. Uh, I will go like little by little and, and say some of my, uh, another point was that it was very important to go to the original Russian because not every time the translations were accurate in the, in the translation of the, the words whistle, right? And so I will go by one by one in the, in that list of, of the corpus I explored. In the tragedy of Hamlet, uh, Vygotsky talks about a first sense and the second sense, very plain, very not fancy at all, first and second. The first sense is the narration of the event of the external facts, what he called by quoting Shakespeare, words, words, and words. What is written, the external narration, whatever any reader, any person who can read, can read the text and understand what's going on. The second sense is the tragedy itself, the invisible drama. So I'm kind of extracting some of Bogotsky's own expressions. The otherworldly sphere, the underlining meaning that determines the first sense, which as Vygotsky also uh, explains by using another quote, the rest is silence. So what, as a reader, you can have words, 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 but if you investigate and if you go deeply in the formal construction of the play and in how, how the, the tragedy is organized, you're gonna see that there is something above that. Although he doesn't use above here, he's using just second sense. It's quite plain, quite a simple terminology here, uh, which is whatever determines the, act, the kind of the spirit that animates um, the tragedy which is condensated in the play by the image of the ghost and this other world element that kind of determines whatever happens in the, in the play. Um, it's clear that there is a mystic overtone when in this, in Vygotsky's reading, in, the, in his idea of sense in this first work, it's like, uh, the tragedy of Hamlet is, was written in 1915. And there is a major influence of symbolist aesthetic. I mean, uh, if you know symbolist um, literature and, and philosophy of art, we see a lot of these ideas, the symbol as the myth, as something that uh, hides a higher sense uh, is totally there in, in Vygotsky's reading. So this is the background dialogue, theoretical dialogue here. One of uh, Gommel, reviews of the Gommel period, Vygotsky uses small psychological sense. It's not good psychological. Dushevni means from the soul. So the sense from the soul that is small <laughs> and the big, a great spiritual sense, the Hovni's muscles, then spiritual I think is accurate, but Dushevni means from the soul. There is an opposition here between soul and spirit. And Vygotsky says that uh, he's talking about dance. It's a very beautiful uh, review, actually. He says that, that classical dance is, a diff is as indifferent to the reproduction of natural movement and the expression of the petty psychological meaning sense as music is to anomatopoeia. Like music, it builds autonomously a living plastic of art artificial forms animated by rhythm, its own special world of great meaning, not psychological, but spiritual. So again, I'm using meaning here because somehow in English, it doesn't sound good to use sense here, but anyways, he's talking about sense. Um, a small 
spir uh, psychological sense and a great spiritual sense. Uh, dance is a way of transcending the regular and normal psychology. Here, I think we've got this kind of halfway between the cultural environment of silver age of symbolism uh, with its mysticism and, and, and religiousness and the notion of art as a social and therefore supra individual technique of emotions. He's not quite there yet. He's not as he didn't get to the idea of social technique of emotions yet, but he's already talking about going a, beyond one's individual experiences and, and personal, let's say, experiences. He's not using person, he's using soul as a synonym, I would say, to psyche or to mind. Um, again, he uses great sense and then great sense in opposition to everyday sense. Uh, he says, all this can be summarized in one sentence. There is, the theater is not a copy of life or history because the world, the movement, the scenery, all its elements emancipate themselves from the narrow psychological, ordinary, everyday meaning sense. Artistically realized, they become material. And before he said, uh, the drama creates grand, great meanings, agromnis mostly, I mean, great senses, uh, enormous, huge senses. And in opposition, he uses narrow, psychological, ordinary, everyday senses. Very often, Vygotsky uses this everyday, this butavoy in a negative sense, meaning something uh, too simple or something too close to uh, everyday life. This is another review from the Gomel period. The, in the preface uh, to Vygotsky, to Bojovsky, I got the title of my paper. He says, uh, there is an interplay between the two senses in the drawings of, Vygotsky, of Bojovsky. Uh, this overcoming and dissolving the independent lyricism in the line and of any obje object related theme constitutes the main feature of his creativity. So he talks about two spatial and stylistic levels. One is three dimensional, object related, representational, and the other is planar, objectless, and rhythmic. Here he is using the vocabulary of visual arts, of graphic arts and to, to qualify senses, two types of senses. And here we don't have much of a hierarchy. The one is not above the other. Unlike in the previous census say, uh, cases, there seem to be a bigger and a smaller one. Here they seem to be in equal, um, have, having equal values, but they just play with each other. So the interplay of senses. Uh, well, in the psychology of art, duality is everywhere. So what's he's talking about duality from end to end. He talks about form and content, device material, sujet, uh, plot and fabula, the sequence of events, which comes from basically Russian formalism. Uh, and he says in one of the passages, he says, using sense, the idea of sense. The words of a poem or uh, of a story or poem carry a simple meaning, a simple sense. Uh, it's water. While the composition creating above these words on top of them, a new meaning uh, organizes all this in an entirely different plane and turns it into wine. He's using here the metaphor, turning water to, into wine. So there is a simple meaning and there is a new meaning arising from the composition from the poetic uh, creation itself. I will try to wrap this <laughs> by giving some final remarks. As I see, there is a dualistic matrix in Vygotsky's thinking. His opposing elements, duality, contradiction uh, is in the basis. And, but on the other hand, the terminology is very inconsistent. He's using things that are relevant to, to that type of art he's talking about. But anyways, it's not, after all, a scientific uh, work. So he's using, he's less consistent in terms of terminology. He's 
these are not concepts. Therefore, I am not even sure I should be talking about an archaeology of concepts in the first place. But anyways, uh, he's already, let's say, playing with the certain ideas that will be later very important for, for cultural historical theory. Uh, we can see here also the changing and mostly the broadening of his theoretical dialogues. So starting from symbolism, theory of literature to formalism and Marxism. And uh, it seems already important, the idea, the very Marx, Marxist idea of the Hegelian idea, actually, of di dialectical contradiction and Aufhebung, this dialect dialectic overcoming of contradictions, right? This seems to be already laying there some, somehow. Uh, I would like, I think it's important for me to, to, to mention that there are relevant aesthetic traits. He, because he uh, resorts to a lot of image, imagery and metaphors. And I think that these images and metaphors that he's using are kind of laboratories to his future concepts. Uh, he's playing with, with his idea by using metaphors and and trying to expand the normal vocabulary with these images. And there he seems to be having insights on things that in the future would be fully and actually full-fledgedly developed as scientific, properly scientific concepts. I'm not alone on this, I guess. The, there was a, a paper by Van der Veer and by Zitun, especially Zitun is, has been working with this idea of the metaphors as one of the elements in the engine of Vygotsky's thinking, uh, following the development, she says, following the development of metaphor, I propose enables us to retrace the evolution of Vygotsky's theoretical thinking. Um, and also Van der Veer uh, reinforces this, saying that metaphors serve to shape uh, Vygotsky's idea. Although I have to say, and I, I think Nikolai is waiting for this. This is not a simple equation <laughs> because he alerts me all the time about that and I totally agree. There are different theor theoretical underpinnings, goals and research objects. We I cannot simply equate whatever Vygotsky was doing early on to what he did later on, not only because he matured, but also because he changed goals and he, his research projects were different. Um, the nature of these productions are <laughs> totally different. Uh, art critiques, psychological works, they have different goals and different um, styles. I mean, they, are, they have served to different purposes. And of course, different stages of the development of uh, cultural historical theory. Uh, I, I mean, Gomeo period is not even cultural historical theory. So obviously we're, we're talking about different historical moments. Um, I think I forgot something important here. I would just talk about it very briefly. When I was, uh, so these two levels of understanding of meaning of sense, this was actually the conclusion of my paper and I think I forgot to include here. Uh, coming uh, to, to thinking and speech, to word and uh, thought and word, I propose that this duality is then finally expressed in meaning and sense. So this is how he would elaborate it more scientifically, borrowing from Polan, but anyways, he's using other, another uh, theoretical dialogue. But I think the duality remains and the idea of the levels of how, what, a meaning, what, a, what a word can mean is already present in the early works, but then is more scientifically or more coherent, co co coherently uh, elaborated later on. Uh, the category of sense, of a higher sense that appears in Hamlet entangled in an aura of mystery and religion becomes the upper step. So this is my own metaphor. So the, because he is in front of a ladder and the higher sense is the upper step in a ladder that one can and must climb in order to move forward with social and individual, individual development. 
If art appears as a sphinx, the young Vygotsky of 1915 allowed himself to be devoured. So he wanted to know the second meaning and, and he agrees and he, he acknowledges in the end that he cannot understand. It's a philosophical and religious problem that he cannot fully grasp and, and uh, uncover in his essay. He says that. Uh, so he allows himself to be devoured by the second meaning, acknowledging his defeat, though not without a fight. He's still trying to write about it. Ten years later, imbued with the possibilities of social transformation brought about the revolution, the enigma is to be deciphered. It seems to me that after the revolution and after Hamlet, this mystical overtone disappears, and then whatever the second sense means, he wants to grasp it and he wants to uncover it. He goes for it. It's not only like this huge undecipherable enigma. Uh, well, that's it. I hope it didn't take too much time and I will be happy to hear from you in the end. I'm gonna stop uh, sharing my screen and give the floor to Giselle. Hi everyone. Uh, uh, thank you, Priscilla, for your wonderful presentation. Uh, I'm quite honored and pleased to share Virginia with you, uh, this uh, group we created together, and also uh, uh, to be here uh, today, uh, tonight, or <laughs> uh, whatever time zone you are, uh, and Nikolai for, for the invitation and also for sending uh, in such a kind manner uh, many Vygotsky's tests to me and so to so many people. And also David, uh, who sent me uh, a number of years ago, I think 12 years perhaps, some, uh, some remarks on Polya, I believe. Uh, so um, uh, uh, tonight uh, I would like to, to introduce let me share my screen. A uh, presentation that uh, we performed here uh, in a live uh, activity uh, in YouTube on the pedology. Uh, I will uh, present some of my uh, research and also uh, by Jean Baptiste Martins, uh, who has done a very impressive, uh, uh, a large um, research uh, uh, on. Uh, the pedology uh, in many countries, as well as in uh, Russian Empire and Soviet Union. Uh, he has some papers in Spanish and Portuguese. Uh, to, um, so uh, for a start, uh, uh, can you see my, my screen? Oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, I also work with the school psychology, but unfortunately I could not uh, um, I bring you uh, more applied contributions. Instead of it, uh, I uh, bring you the um, uh, some reflections on pedology as uh, the birth of a pure or an applied science. Um, uh, first and foremost, we will speak a little bit about this uh, science in uh, USA, uh, Europe, and after that, uh, as I told you, uh, Russian Empire and Soviet Union. Uh, and then we will speak a little bit about the place of pedology among other sciences, uh, its subject, um, according to Vygotsky, especially in his text, uh, uh, pedology, and, uh, pedology and psychotechnics, I, I believe. Uh, first, uh, Carlos Monarca, a Brazilian researcher, says that pedology and neologism created in the 19th century by Oscar Crisma was a disciplinary field that together with pedagogical anthropology, scientific pedagogy, psychological pedagogy, pedotechnics, uh, among others, was born in response to pressures and urgencies originated in the large historical cycle that saw the emergence of the school for the masses and its uh, obligatoriness as a matter of the state. Uh, so there was a, a huge impulse to study children after uh, quite some time, uh, or at least um, a decade or so, uh, in that uh, 
uh, children were not studied by psychology as for Wundt, as uh, only a uh, male uh, uh, man could be, only men and uh, um, uh, wrong, adults could be uh, uh, st st uh, studied by psychology. Uh, so, uh, Krisman, he wrote uh, his uh, PhD dissertation, uh, whose name uh, uh, translated here uh, is Pedology, the Science of the Child, the Historical Child. Uh, he was uh, supervised by Granville Stanley Hall. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the idea comes from Greek, uh, Pedos, uh, Child Logo Science. Uh, here, um, Prisma uh, supported the idea that uh, it's a science whose task was to investigate the life, growth, ideas, and the very being of the child. Its only goal is to study the child in all its phases and in a scientific way, which can provide material for a scientific application of these results to pedology, uh, from pedology for, for, for pedology itself, uh, I can understand, uh, for uh, medicine, for theology, for domestic training, and of uh, child care. So uh, it was written in uh, 1894. Uh, one can say, according to João Batista, uh, that Crisman proposes a research program that points to the need to place the, ch the child in the center of a circle so that all the energy gravitates around them. Uh, therefore, the child becomes the organizing center of a discipline that has education as its goal, both in the familiar sense and in the academic sense. On the other hand, uh, this di dimension, dimension puts pedology in the field of uh, applied sciences. But on the other hand, it can be considered as a pure science, seeing that the child is to be studied in labs, at home, outside of play, and they must be also studied in both civilized and uncivilized, uncivilized population under normal and abnormal circumstances, from the fetal phase to other levels of development, both physiologically and psychologically. From the articulation of this knowledge coming, coming from different sciences, academic discipline must arise, allowing each, each field of expertise to have a look at the others, and thus, as a synergy, speed up each other's progress. Uh, so it's a kind of an interdisciplinary field uh, already to its uh, creator, I can say. Uh, here, uh, João uh, brought us uh, some uh, uh, sample texts, only, uh, of course, there was a, a, a great uh, uh, amount of literature. Uh, in France, in Belgium, in Germany, uh, many countries, uh, these uh, science started to rise uh, in, in the labs and uh, also, um, I mean, in institutionally in, uh, broader, uh, in the broader sense of the word. Uh, João and also uh, I studied this uh, text by Elena Minkova uh, that uh, um, talks about the ascent and descent of the Russian pedology project in the early 20th century, and also by Carlo Trombetta. Uh, this uh, uh, was only studied by uh, João, who uh, I couldn't unfortunately, unfortunately bring all his uh, bibliography, but uh, uh, he can uh, send you uh, uh, if you if you deem that's nece necessary. Um, Minkova uh, here uh, is a very interesting um, uh, figure. Uh, here we can see that uh, uh, more it was more a pure science. Uh, it had not uh, so many. Um, uh, applied topics uh, as, for example, role of environment in the mental development of ch children, abnormalities in mental development, uh, age appropriate to, uh, stages of mental development, methods and programs of pedology. The only professional orientation probably would uh, today recognize 
as an applied topic. So uh, these are the percentage, percentages of books published according to subject in the period of uh, 1904 to 36 uh, in, in Russia. Uh, we usually, when we speak uh, about the history of uh, Russian pedology, uh, remember Bektirev and his Institute on, on Pedology. Uh, but as a matter of fact, uh, Neshayev is uh, recognized um, in this literature we researched as uh, the pioneer of Russian pedology. Uh, he uh, created uh, in St. Petersburg in 1900 the Ped Pedological Museum, uh, first led by Alexander Nish. Uh, so uh, he was also the author of important works and texts about educational psychology as well as pedology. So it's very uh, 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 related uh, fields uh, that we can uh, see uh, the, the cave later. Uh, it was also a very tense uh, relation, especially in, in the 30s. Uh, uh, he was the pioneer of pedological courses uh, in Russia. Uh, other uh, researchers uh, that we can remember here are Bernstein uh, in 1908 uh, that opened in Moscow a, a lab similar to Neshayev's and also Rosalino uh, you uh, that uh, you who know so so well of uh, we remember that he uh, here and then here and there uh, he quotes uh, Rosalino he used some of his contributions and also Chopanov, Rybnikov, and Vyektyev, uh, um, uh, among others. Uh, at the time, all the work involved, uh, involved an attempt at relating the psychological and the neurosomatical process, neurosomatic processes between the individual's body and personality, between biological and social, an effort that reflected the tendency to found the science of the child and its development on a materialistic basis. So this attempt uh, at doing uh, materialistic pedology uh, it was done uh, prior to the October Revolution uh, itself to, to Juan, uh, to, uh, to, according to, to Juan Batista. To consider the individual in the present situation as a result of an activity stimulated by external inputs represented a new approach uh, to the scientific investigation. With the background on natural sciences, the first Russian pedologists showed pedagogues how to make the educational process more effective, or at least they tried to do so. Uh, here uh, we have a, a photo in public domain of uh, Blonsky, uh, who also was also uh, quoted by Vygotsky a lot. It was very uh, influential, on, influential on his work. Uh, this is a, a, a Chetnik, right? Um, a textbook. textbook. Yes, uh, thank you. A textbook uh, for, I believe, for higher training of uh, uh, pedagogues. Uh, it, it, it was uh, an important pub, uh, publishing in his time. And uh, Blonsky is also considered by Jodarsky as the one who defended uh, that psychology uh, would become a Marxist uh, a field of knowledge. Uh, my own research uh, tries to assess pedology in the context of Soviet science, uh, especially uh, Departing from Jodavsky uh, and Kremensov and also uh, Yasnitsky. Uh, and the idea is uh, uh, to, to also to uh, understand what was this uh, pure or applied science, what exactly uh, was, cons was uh, considered at that point. Uh, so, and also its uh, relations with other fields, especially psychotechnics. Um, 
we can uh, uh, some some important topics is that uh, there was at that point an overlapping of uh, disciplines, or one can say in a more uh, positive um, frame of mind that transdisciplinarity uh, that seemed seems clear as a historical fact for the science of the time. Pre-revolutionary, -revol pre so uh, studies uh, done before the October Revolution, uh, they took the integration of biological and social studies. Uh, they tried to, to, um, to put them together. Uh, this leads to the search of uh, uh, this pre -revol revolutionary materialistic science. Uh, as opposed to the metaphysical or religious uh, knowledge at that, uh, uh, so far. It was, it's supposed to be a pure science so with practical applications that could study the child in different contexts. Uh, for me, it's kind of strange to um, support the, this idea of a pure science because uh, we have immediately the, the uh, we are under the impression that uh, uh, pure science is uh, totally disconnected from the real life, but uh, it was not uh, certainly the Vygotsky's perspective, perspective and of many uh, other researchers uh, at that point. Uh, there was also uh, an intention to move towards uh, practices. Uh, so, uh, if we, uh, I think it's very interesting uh, as a historian of psychology to, to take this uh, first five year uh, plan uh, as a subject of study because, because of uh, uh, it was really at the point in that uh, uh, many people uh, uh, called the Veliki Pirilon, the Great Break, and that Stalin really changed the. Uh, uh, his country. Uh, in this point, uh, it's uh, in, uh, important to remember uh, this observation about layers of knowledge and social practice. So, uh, focus, focusing on Vygotsky circle, Jasnitsky identifies during the 20s a structure compo composed of four layers of scientific knowledge and social practice from the most general and abstract to the ge least general and more concrete Marxist philosophy, general or scientific theory, applied intermediate, intermediate theories, uh, and social practice. Uh, what Stalin did uh, in, in this uh, period, uh, it, uh, ha it happened a radical simplification of this organization under the Stalinism. Uh, so these uh, intermediate uh, fields, they were pretty much erased. Uh, and, and pedology could be uh, uh, placed uh, uh, here probably uh, as an uh, in intermediate theory. Uh, uh, Stalin, so uh, he tried to put uh, a direct connection the Marxist philosophy with social practice, uh, as uh, Lukacs uh, himself recognized. So uh, it led to a dramatic simplification of Marx's theory that we can see um, uh, across the, the, the Soviet period. Uh, well, um, at this point in the Great Break, there was a strong and brief impulse to practical sciences of Western origin. It was very uh, interesting. The first five-year plan, uh, according to Joravsky, the changes to, to sciences was approved in 27. And at that point, Stalin's, uh, there was a Stalin, uh, uh, Stalin's complaint about scientists in December 29 about their ineptitude to make practical contributions for the evolution of socialism that reverberated uh, strongly in the first Soviet Union Congress on Human Behavior in January 30. It was a very important Congress. And we can uh, say that uh, our uh, favorite researchers pretty much knew about this. Uh, Jodavsky sees Vygotsky's and Luria's research in Uzbekistan as an attempt to approach the practical. 
world. Uh, so they try to, to uh, some level to answer uh, this demand for this, this request for, for more practical uh, science. Uh, Vygotsky's production, production follows so this general picture, but uh, they were pretty much frustrated with the results, uh, considering that Luria uh, was um, uh, interrogated uh, and uh, uh, they were criticized and uh, the, message, uh, the message was loud and, and clear from, from the party uh, that they should not uh, um, mix themselves in political uh, uh, questions involving uh, the socialism in far, uh, in far regions of uh, Soviet Union. So uh, practical sciences, uh, Jarevsky considers they were a part of a Stalinist, Stalinist project to reach and surpass, surpass the USA. So the idea is that, so, and now so it's remembered as to catch up and overtake the USA. So they wanted to, to do what the USA did better than USA itself. So uh, uh, the impulse of these uh, considered practical uh, disciplines, psychology, pedology, and psychotechnics uh, was very strong. Uh, in 28, they uh, gained their own journals. And these last two topics, pedology and psychotechnics, uh, were the object of the five-year plan uh, for psychologists. Uh, and also, uh, Psychophysics of Labor, another, another important journal. Uh, psychotechnics uh, also uh, faced uh, a lot of contradictions. Uh, we can uh, roughly uh, uh, define as an application of experimental psychology to the administration of work was created by Hugo Munsterbeck, former student of Hunt, who lived uh, in the USA. Uh, uh, well, which contradictions? Uh, some important tools uh, from psychotechnics started, to, started being criticized. Uh, so criticism of the standardized psychological tests appeared uh, already in 38, 31, as well as of the importation of bourgeois science. Uh, uh, I, uh, Spiren, just please do not mix with Sabina Spiren, this another uh, Spiren, uh, an important and leading uh, uh, work, uh, author of psychotechnics. Uh, he criticized, as for example, the exploration of work and what was called at that point, at that point the, the exhaustion in the Soviet Union, uh, which uh, reviews, and he was himself censored and uh, his work disappeared com completely in the 30s, uh, which reviews the contradictions of uh, Stalinist uh, uh, scientificism. Uh, so if you criticize the, the regime, if you criticize uh, the social order, uh, this is not very welcome, even in a, a republic of workers. Uh, so these journals uh, were uh, facing this uh, contradictory uh, social situation. Psychotechnics uh, ends uh, its activities in 34, pedology in 32, as well as uh, questions of personality study and training. Uh, so this strange fate of pedology was a particularly controversial cha chapter in Stalinist pragmatism to Jodorowsky. Uh, there was, uh, many people believe that uh, everything was uh, going uh, well um, prior to the decree, but uh, a historic research that uh, we performed uh, does not show that at all. Uh, this uh, and we also can see this movement uh, in Minkova's uh, figure. Uh, this is the dynamics of development of pedology as a science between 94 and 36. It was a, a, a huge bibliometric uh, research she, she performed. And here we can see that after uh, 1930, there was uh, a fall in the number of publications 
uh, until its extension in 36. So uh, it was already in a sort of price of a crisis um, that reviews uh, how the state changed uh, uh, its ideas on pedagogy. Uh, well, um, the, there was uh, there was a number of uh, critics that were, were made to pedagogy in thirty two. Following the first wave of Stalinization of sciences after uh, 29, and uh, followed by a second and more, much more violent wave between 36 and 39. Uh, so Vygotsky was also criticized among uh, many even pedologists. Uh, this situation uh, in a sort of, sort of way is connected by many authors with the pub publishing of Makarenko's pedagogical poem, a text that uh, changed um, what was uh, considered as uh, adequate for uh, Soviet education. Um, uh, Jarovsky uh, synthesizes this uh, fate of pedology uh, in the following way. Uh, Stalin and his party uh, had the usual 20th century mix of incons inconsistent attitudes about applied psychology, but he was unique in their violent fluct fluctuations from one to the other. Uh, in the uh, 20s, 20s and early 30s, they believed in psychohygiene, psychotechnics, and pedology, and suddenly they, become, they became so hostile that they seemed to be discarding any notion of expertise in mental health, industrial psychology, and child studies. It is clear that they were still determined to modernize Soviet Russia, which meant that it was still necessary to have experts to treat people with disorders, to manage work, workers and school-aged children. But they, uh, uh, at that point, perhaps didn't know how they would do, they would do but the contradictions uh, of importing these um, Western disciplines uh, were, uh, were being felt, as for example, many people believe that uh, pedology and psychotechnics, they uh, kept uh, um, uh, perhaps a meritocratic uh, sort of view with the mental testing and the attempt at trying to uh, select the brightest and so on. This is Jaravsky speaking. Uh, uh, you know, it's so we can uh, ask, uh, what was Vygotsky doing, what did he, uh, what he thought about, the, about all this, all this. Uh, uh, we performed a little research uh, in Russian in his published work, in published works, and as well as other sort of um, uh, papers. Uh, there were at least eight with pedology in its, their titles. Uh, and something uh, very interesting that uh, pedology appears with this name in Vygotsky's work from at least uh, 28 to 34. Uh, the beginning was a sign uh, of the aforementioned uh, institutional impulse that involves, involves particularly works of a general character, reflections on the foundations of pedology and its relations with uh, uh, nearby sciences. So uh, even when pedology was losing some attention, it's interesting to notice, Vygotsky uh, uh, insists in, uh, write, uh, in writing about uh, pedology. Well, uh, something relevant is also this discipline gains momentum in the context of practical sciences, as we saw. Uh, to 1930, Vygotsky approaches it as the general science about children. So the state uh, apparently believed that these disciplines uh, I spoke about, they were applied, but uh, Vygotsky and, and other um, scientists did not share this, this uh, view. Uh, here some. So uh, now we can start uh, talking a little bit about uh, this uh, very interesting 
uh, paper, uh, the name is Pedologia e Psychotechnica, uh, Pedology and Psychotechnics uh, from 1930. Uh, it is, exists only in Russian, if I'm not wrong. It's a, an initial text about the topic with surprising statements for the understanding of Vygotsky's trajectory in the science and in psychology as well. Uh, if, if this first, uh, some of the first uh, paragraphs are very interesting because he says that pedology is dead in the West and in the USA and it's dying in Soviet Union. So he was fully aware of uh, its crisis. Uh, and he believes that it, this is due to the methodological basis of its construction. In Europe and in the USA, authors claim for a radical empiricism, but in fact, they practice dualism uh, and mechanically they join body and soul. However, uh, uh, this is not enough for empirical sciences. Pedologies, uh, practical and methodological formation can realize only on the basis uh, of a materialistic can be, real, be uh, made only on the basis of materialistic understanding of its subject. Uh, he said that a common thread, a krasnaya neat, has to run through the entire uh, theoretical construction of the science of uh, development. As far as its object, pedology presupposes the search for connections in studies of ch on children viewed in their new qualities, I mean, as a new totality, we can say. The Dinstava probably uh, is the word. Uh, the possibility of pedagogical practice regarding these connections proves to be the only and main methodological criterion of truth. So he keeps uh, in mind uh, his own uh, 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 statements in the historical meaning of crisis in psychology, and he, he supports this idea uh, of practice as the criterion of truth. Uh, he believes uh, that to understand better these relations between pedagogy and psychotechnics, it was a, a presentation that he performed in the institution, Institute of uh, uh, Psychotechnics, if I'm not wrong. Uh, he says that to understand these relations, uh, first and foremost, it was necessary to understand the relation between pedology and uh, psychology, because psychotechnics was a part of psychology, returning later to uh, psychotechnics and a zigzag movements, since uh, psychotechnics belongs entirely to the field of psychology. Uh, and he uh, considered that child psychology, even in the Marxist system of science, develops as one of the pedological disciplines. This is uh, kind of uh, surprising, but uh, so child psychology was not uh, properly or entirely uh, in the field of psychology, but was one of the pedagogical disciplines. It's a kind of complex to understand how this does not uh, overlap, uh, uh, this uh, can be somehow confusing to our, our senses. Uh, he performs an analogy with biological sciences considering that the relationship between these sciences should, should resemble in the system of Marxist thought, the relationship of biology to particular biological disciplines such as embryology, zoology, or botany. But just as each of these particular sciences is related to the laws of the development and existence of living organisms, a child psychology which deals with the behavior of children in their development can and should develop not in a way contrary to pedagogical disciplines. It must be concerned with the place that psychological evolution occupies in the general system of ontogenesis. Similarly, the psychology of peoples cannot be constructed as a discipline in contradiction with sociology, the loss of development of society, etc. Uh, there is a material dependence of psychology concerning social and biological disciplines. Um, he considers that uh, uh, putting all this together, uh, I would like to formulate it like this. I quote Vygotsky here, child psychology can and must develop as one of the pedagogical disciplines based on its own research and construction from the general and integral. 
this is the place of pedagogical determination and the relationship of this psychological process of development uh, with ontogenesis as a whole and the general doctrine of child development. Uh, so this common ground, this ontogenesis, as we can see repeatedly, uh, it's possible to borrow methods and data from other sciences to his view, uh, and uh, still staying uh, in one's, one domain. For him, it's not a big problem uh, if you uh, share uh, methods and data. Uh, we understand that the theory of crisis uh, is pedagogical, while the study of behavior or psychic functions is psychological. Uh, uh, Vygotsky states that in order to study child development, for example, in crisis, one must first know that the behavior is uh, just like the child psychologist should know uh, what a child is. So uh, we understand that uh, higher psychic functions or mental functions and behavior are subject of uh, psychology and not of pedology. Uh, uh, he, be he believes that uh, uh, so they can share the same object, uh, for example, the ontogenesis or the child, from different angles. The relationship between pedology and other sciences resembles uh, the refraction of reality, I would say, for different Peri Giovanni. Uh, although the psychologists and the pedologists study the same object from different angles, they arrive at different, different laws. I mean, they there's not an um, overlapping of uh, laws, but the possibility of uh, Babelic confusion seems deadly to, in, to the independent, is, independent existence of different science, sciences. So he believe that it should be, uh, uh, they should be separated in some, some way. They uh, should not be confused. Uh, uh, although it's not, uh, I can say very clear what he meant by that. The, the pedologist is not interested in the study of practical intellect itself, but in the three-year-old child and its development. So it's a more uh, holistic approach than that of uh, psychology. Uh, so the theme of personality and its crisis seems, uh, therefore, to be pedagogical. Here I, I am almost finishing. I uh, bring you uh, some questions and conclusions to continue the conversation. Uh, we can say that the Vygotsky uh, brings to pedology his creative genius in the fullest sense of word. Uh, in some aspects, he follows the understanding of uh, the Western uh, psychologists who believe that was uh, um, a more like a pure science uh, and others uh, he dissociates himself from, from these authors um, uh, because uh, when pedology was dying in the West, for him it was not a big matter of, of concern, as I could uh, understand. He was, uh, following Joravsky, we can also say that the distinction of pedology shows how it was caught in a rewind of contradictions, including with respect to the egalitarian ethos of the revolution. We also have an impression of congestion and confusion of attributions inter sciences and of these with the professions and social practices. This, for me, uh, seems to, to be uh, indeed uh, uh, deadly for, for these uh, this, uh, newborn sciences. The scientific order is quite different, we can see uh, from the contemporary one. So when we look at pedology, we're looking at another, another um, uh, order of sciences, as for example, here in Brazil, um, the professional orientation uh, is now done, performed especially by school psychologists, but uh, for them it was done by industrial psychology or psychotechnics. But this is not a, a very uncommon uh, attribution, of course. Sciences do not change their object, their object when studying teams in common with others. Uh, it is what makes interdisciplinary possible. Perhaps there lies the error of pedology transforming a theme of the child into an object, which uh, does not occur in interdisciplinary dialogues usually. Uh, uh, I believe uh, that was also could be a reason 
for the, the, the depth of, of pedology in terms of a worldwide context. Uh, at the same time, you can argue. argue. Uh, but Giselle, um, there is gerontology. Uh, there is a study of the elderly. Why not pedology? Why not the study of the child and the, the adolescent? Uh, this is also a very good question that I can, cannot answer. Pedology seemed to be consol consolidated as a scientific area, but in this extreme dependence on Soviet policies. Um, something very important, if we can uh, compare uh, pedology with genetics. Genetics was also banned in the in 48 uh, in that uh, Lysenko affair, uh, but uh, it, it returned quickly uh, and many people uh, made a movement so that it could uh, uh, be uh, released from, from this ban after someone's death. So the scientists itself, they, they survived, in, 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 uh, however, in shadows. Uh, this did not happen with the pedologists. Uh, this is for me a very interesting difference because pedology was, uh, I believe, more dependent on, on the state, uh, on official uh, uh, policies. Uh, another question, was this international decay? So the reason for the disinterest in the USSR SSSR. Uh, uh, Vygotsky's speech shows that this fact was already known, uh, even by those who produced it. So uh, it was uh, dying abroad. Mark, a very interesting question. We can also uh, speculate about uh, why Vygotsky kept uh, uh, his interest in, in pedology. Uh, here, Schnuli and uh, Leopoldov Martin. Uh, talk about um, his pedolo pedological work as a response uh, to his uh, diagnosis of the crisis and, and the psychology. And also Jean Batista uh, speaks a little bit that the pedology provided with, uh, uh, in short, a more uh, an, integ an integrative approach that was uh, essential, as we can see here in this quotation from the historical meaning of Christ in psychology, to uh, surpass dualism. So uh, that's all, folks, for, for now. Thank you for your patience, and I'm sorry for any mistakes. Uh, there are some references missing. Uh, there was kind of uh, uh, miscommunication uh, in, uh, regarding the, the slides. That, uh, and uh, uh, but uh, we can for sure provide you with the, the correct references if you if you need. Thank you very much, and uh, I will send you the, this this presentation. Too. Thank you, Giselle. Uh, Nikolai, I don't think we have a lot. Any time <laughs> for questions, uh, maybe we uh, just uh, just one comment, if you if you don't mind. Uh, oh yeah, just one com just one comment from me. Uh, thank you, Priscilla and Giselle, for presenting Vershina Group. Uh, now we see how deep how deep your research is, and for me, what is important, probably not only for me, but for everybody who is here in the school, we, we have a couple of sessions about Vygotsky's pedology, uh, led by David mostly and partly by me. But uh, what I love in Giselle's presentation is uh, now we have now we have an opportunity to see the the historical and cultural and political uh, context context of Russian pedology and contribution of Vygotsky into pedology, which is very, very important because uh, we can only understand the, the contribution of the researcher. If you take this contribution within the specific cultural, social, political, and historical context, this is a demand of cultural historical psychology or theory, if you wish. So thank you very much. And uh, Priscilla, well, as always, I'm deeply impressed about how deep you go uh, in discovering undiscovered Vygotsky or discovering Vygotsky before Vygotsky. Yeah, uh, there is an illusion that Vygotsky 
everything Vygotsky wrote was about cultural historical theory. But this is not the this is not the case. Vygotsky published a lot of uh, not published but uh, wrote a lot before he started to develop cultural historical theory. And these uh, early writings of Vygotsky are so important to understand why he came to cultural historical theory, why he started to, to find a new ways, why he started to de develop a new area of research and why he started to develop a new methodology. This is a, not a prehistory of Vygotsky, it's a, how, how to say, history, the history of cultural historical theory. Mm -hmm. This research is very important and thank you very much and please send my greetings to all the members of the Vrishina group and we hope to meet you many times in the future, uh, probably next time in Moscow ISKAR Congress, which we are having next year. Thank you very much. I was deeply impressed about your presentation. Thank you. Big success. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Nikolai, for your kind words. <laughs>